Hello and welcome to another video on basic fiber optics. Today we're going to be talking about polarization. So as you may know, light consists of an electromagnetic wave that sort of wiggles as it propagates forward. So let's imagine that we have a light wave that's propagating towards the, the camera here. Well then the light wave can sort of wiggle in the x direction like so, it could wiggle in the y direction like this, or it could wiggle in some combination of the two. So it's wiggling a bit in the x direction, a bit in the y direction, and maybe it's going to be sort of wiggling at a 45 degree angle or a 60 degree angle or maybe a negative 45 degree angle like so. Many combinations are possible. Another option is that if the wiggling in the x direction and the wiggling in the y direction are slightly out of sync, then the electric field vector can actually sort of rotate in almost a circle. In fact, if they're exactly 90 degrees out of phase, we do get a sort of what we call circular polarization. So if you see the electric field ve vector rotating uh, counterclockwise uh, as the light propagates towards you, then we say that it's right hand polarized. You can see I'm using my right hand right now, sort of putting my thumb along the direction of propagation, and then my fingers are going uh, counterclockwise. That's right hand light. But of course, it can also be out of sync in the opposite direction by negative 90 degrees. In that case, we'll see that the electric field vector sort of spins clockwise as it propagates towards us. So that'll be left hand polarization. All right, so to see this in action, I've constructed a little setup right here. Let me see if I can turn the camera mount so you can see it. All right. So, this um, box right here contains two instruments. This one right here is a DFB laser. We saw one of those in the previous video. And this one right here is a polarimeter. So it's an instrument that measures the state of polarization of the light coming in. So right now the DFB laser is on, so it's sending light out of this fiber and into this device right here, which is called a polarization controller. Essentially the idea is that we can grab one, some of the paddles here, rotate those, and that's going to change the state of polarization of the light propagating inside. And then the output of this position controller goes into the um, polarimeter right here, and then the result is displayed on the on the screen as we see. So right now, I'm going to move one of the paddles around, and you'll see that there's a red dot here on the sphere is moving around, as well as you can see the uh, state of position over here. So this um, diagram to the right here is telling us what the state of polarization is sort of in the, using the formalism I just showed you with my hands before. So right now we have light that's wiggling at maybe it's like a 10 degree angle or something like that, um, back and forth like so. If I turn the paddle a bit more, you can see that now it's sort of wiggling at a, this is more like a 80 degree angle perhaps. So I'm almost up to sort of a Y polarization right here. And if I turn the paddle just a bit more, you'll see the circular expands. And I have to imagine that this light here sort of is both sort of wiggling in this direction, but also sort of having a, an elliptical, almost like circular right-hand polarization. Maybe we can actually turn it a little bit more and get it completely to right-hand polarized. Like so. So you can see right now, you should imagine the electric field vector sort of spinning around uh, counterclockwise like this. And if I modify the panels a little bit more, you can see now it says left up here. So right now, the electric field vector is sort of spinning in, in this direction as we look down the direction of propagation. You also notice that there's like a, a dot that's sort of sitting around on this sphere over here. So this diagram is called a Poincaré sphere. Essentially, it is a way of visualizing all the possible states of polarization that the, um, that the laser can have. So you'll notice that there's a, a label here called H. So let me just see if I can bring the dot over here. It always takes a bit of trial error with these uh, polarization controllers. It's not really possible to predict exactly what the dot's going to do when you twist the fiber, but I can sort of bring it close to the H over here. Okay, so essentially we can see that this H right here corresponds to the light being x polarized. And if I turn the panels a bit more, now it's more like 45 degree polarized, as you can see over here, corresponds to here. So the Poincaré sphere is a really convenient sort of abstract tool for visualizing state of polarization because it allows us to meaningfully talk about how close two states of polarization are, for, are to each other. For example, let's suppose that we have light that's horizontally polarized and we also have light that's 45 degree polarized. We can ask, well, how similar are those states of, state of polarization? We can sort of indicate that by the angle that's swept up between those two points. But what if we compare let's say, horizontal polarization to circular polarization, are they sort of more or less similar than um, horizontal and 45 degree light? Well, we can see they're actually sort of in some, some way equally, uh, equally similar because there's a sort of 90 degree angle from here to here and a 90 degree angle from here to here. So those will be, all these three points will actually have the sort of, um, well, we can say that this one and this one are as similar as this one and this one are. So anyway, it's sort of a nice way to, to visualize what the state of polarization is on, um, on sort of an abstract level. Anyway, um, why do we care about polarization in fiber optics? Well, one of the reasons we might care about is that if you have a, a 
when we do data communication, then we might notice that, well, we actually sort of split the data into an X component like this and a Y component like this, and thereby double the, uh, the data rate. Uh, like in one instance, a lot of um, more exotic um, effects inside of optical fibers, if you want to generate, uh, let's say, super continuums of, of light or some other effects, will also be polarization dependent. So it's really important to understand how uh, the state of polarization of light propagates or changes as we propagate down the fiber. Just to illustrate how uh, polarization plays a role, let us take a look at this setup we have right here. So what's happening is that the output is an inline, or the polarimeter we've been using is an inline polarimeter. So whatever goes in actually comes out of this fiber here, and then goes into a polarization beam splitter. So what happens here is that as the light goes into this little red stick here, it essentially gets split up into a component that's uh, polarized in the x direction of this component and one that's polarized in the y direction. And those two outputs are separated and then sent into each of the two power meters over here. Move them slightly closer. So what we should see now is that as I turn this paddle right here, you can see that the amount of power in either one of the two axes is going to change. So here the power is increasing as I'm turning it, and here it's decreasing. So you can see we can sort of split it up. And also these um, devices here, when you're doing like fiber optic experiments, can also be used for cleaning up the state of polarization. So you have some kind of unknown state of polarization coming in. Then you know that over here it's purely polarized, and here it's purely polarized along one, one particular axis. Okay, I think that sort of shows how to how to think about polarization. So one question is, um, what's actually going to happen if I just gently touch this fiber here? Well, you'll see over here on the, the screens that if I just squeeze this fiber slightly, there's a huge change in the state of polarization. Um, essentially, if you just twist the fiber or turn it a little bit, you induce a bit of strain inside of the fiber, which changes the refractive index along different axes inside of the fiber, which then transfers power from maybe the x direction to the y direction or or the other, other way around, or sort of even rotates it. So even a little bit of disturbance of fiber can actually shift the polarization quite a bit. So is there any way we can sort of mitigate this or avoid sort of random strain affecting the state of polarization? And it turns out there is. We can use something called polarization maintaining fiber. So usually just regular non-polarization maintaining fiber is indicated with uh, yellow cladding or yellow jackets here. And polarization maintaining fiber is indicated with red fibers like so. Now, um, sadly, the microscope I have isn't really strong enough to resolve this. But if you were to look at the front face of a polarization maintaining fiber, this is essentially what you see. So for single mode fiber, if you remember one of the previous videos, we just had a sort of a, the, the cladding here, then the tiny core in the middle. But for polarization maintaining fiber, we have both the, the, the cladding and the core in here. But we also have two glass rods that don't carry any light, but have a, um, a different coefficient of thermal expansion than the surrounding glass. So the point is that if we insert these extra rods into the fiber when we mold it, then their presence is going to induce extra strain inside of this, um, this fiber. So you can think of it a little bit like these two rods sort of pressing against the, the core here. And essentially that causes the refractive index along this particular axis to be different from the one along, along this axis. And effectively that this means that if light is sent into the fiber with the polarization along this direction, then it's going to take a very large amount of um, external strain or stress in order to cause light to be um, transferred into the um, vertical component. So this is why we call it a polarization retaining fiber. Actually, it's a bit of a misnomer because it kind of gives you the impression that whatever polarization you send in, you're going to get the same polarization coming out. That isn't quite correct. It's better to think of this as maybe a, um, a fiber that maintains the power along a polarization direction. So if you send just only power inside of the, let's say the x direction here at the input, then you're also only going to get power out of the x direction at the output. But if you send um, light into the fiber sort of at a 45 degree angle, then essentially you have some amount of power in the y direction, some amount of power in the x direction. And those amounts of powers will actually stay the same, but because the x light and the y light propagate at different speeds, uh, even though if you send it in at a 45 degree angle, what's actually going to happen is that these two uh, sort of components of the light will drift out of phase. It'll go from being 45 degree polarized to being circular polarized, and back to being negative 45 degree polarized, and then become left hand circular polarized before again sort of drifting back to being 45 degree like this. All right, so that was just a quick explanation of polarization in fibers. Stay tuned for the next video.